Hello, and welcome to part two of my Sega Genesis coding series. In this episode, we'll be looking at getting sprites onto the screen. I'm assuming you've watched part one and have already followed the instructions for getting started. For this episode, there is a new zip file linked in the description of this video that contains replacement, gamehut.s, and system.s files. I'd back up your old copies first, and then unzip these new ones over the top of the old ones. Let's take a look at how I've set up sprites in the amended gamehut.s file. Okay, looking at the top of the file, you can see that there's a new amendment here to the VRAM, where I've set aside some memory, 960 bytes, for a sprite table. This is where the sprites will be copied to so that the uh, graphic processor can display them on the screen. I've also added two new variables. We're gonna display Sonic on the screen. So we've got Sonic X and Y, which is where Sonic will appear on the screen. That's the plan there. Looking further down here, you can see that I've got uh, a line here which is going to copy sprite graphics. And this is going to be eight characters of 32 bytes each. A character is an eight by eight graphic. And I'm going to copy them into VRAM location 1000. And then further down, I'm setting up a palette here, a second palette, palette two, which I'm going to use for the sprites. So here's where I set up the start position for Sonic. Uh, the edge of the screen on the Sega Genesis starts at 80 hexadecimal. So that would be the left edge of the screen, and this would be the top of the screen. I'm now adding half the screen resolution to that position to get to the middle of the screen. I'm taking eight off, which is half the width of Sonic Sprite, and that should put him right in the middle and doing the same kind of maths for the Y position. Okay, and then actually adding the sprites, I've got some temporary memory here where I'm gonna copy, I'm gonna build my sprite list. Um, this is gonna put the sprite into the list. This will tell the sprite list I've finished, there's no more sprites. And then in here, in the vertical blank, which if you've watched the first episode, you kind of know what that is. This is where I'm gonna copy the table, sprite dump, copies the sprites from sprite temp one to the video RAM that we set aside up here for the sprites, which should then put the sprite on the screen. Um, this is where the sprite is put on the screen, uh, into memory rather. And you can see the first thing we do is, this is just the way the sprites are organized on the Genesis. The first thing we write in is the Y position uh, when we're building a sprite. Then the next thing we do is we tell it how big a sprite we want to draw. In this case, Sonic is two characters by four characters wide. So S underscore two X four means use a sprite that is two characters wide by four characters deep. And I'm saying where the next sprite occurs. So that's pointing at sprite number one. This is sprite zero, the way the Genesis works. And this is sprite one. So this is linking all the sprites together. So this just says the next sprite after this one is gonna be one. And this says, and that's it, we finished. This next line is saying, we're gonna use palette two for this sprite. And it's at location 1000 in video RAM. And then we do this divide by 32, just to get the video RAM into characters, which is what the sprite wants to know about. And then finally, we write the X position of where we want the sprite to appear. So let's go ahead and build this code and see how that appears on the screen. Okay, and there you can see a little pixely Sonic, obviously a graphic I just kind of threw together there. But there he is, a sprite in the middle of the screen. If we go back to the code and uh, scroll right to the bottom, you can see here, this is the sprite graphics. Um, uh, the way it's arranged is two by four characters. And the way the Mega Drive or Genesis works is it draws its sprites uh, using characters vertically. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight for a two by four graphic. And then this here is the data for the Sonic graphic. Uh, each of these, uh, the different pixels, different colors. That's the, the characters used. And then this is the palette. So if you want to play around with the palette to change Sonic's colors, you can do that uh, here with palette two, the second one. So let's go ahead back up here and see if we can do something a little more interesting. I'll actually write a bit of code here uh, to see if we can get Sonic moving on the screen. Okay, so I'll just pick a place around here and we'll add some code to move Sonic. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a command called BTST, which is bit test. And then I've got some presets here. We're gonna bit test J underscore right of the joypad. So what that does is checks just plain and simply to see if the right 
uh, button is pressed on the joypad. Um, branch if that's not equal to zero, so I'll just say move one. So that's going to branch. So if it's not, if it's if right isn't pressed, it's going to branch to here. So it's going to skip over whatever code I put in the middle here. And then in here, all I'm going to do is I'm going to add one to Sonic's X position. Okay, so let's build that and see what happens. And then, okay, it's running now. And if we hold down the right button on the joypad, you can see he, he moves right. So that's a good start. He doesn't move in any other directions, but he moves right. So let's go back to the code. And then what we can do is we can copy this code, change our jump to two, change this bit to left on the joypad. And this time we shall take one away from Sonic. Let's run that and see what we have. And now there we go. We can move him left and right. Okay, unsurprisingly, if we go back to the code, we can do some more and we'll just copy all of this in one go. And we should say, if I press down, move three, and we'll do it to Sonic's Y position this time. And if we press up, move four, and we'll subtract one. Okie dokie. So let's just uh, make sure that builds again and then run the game. And there you go. You can now move Sonic in all four directions. Okay, now one final thing I'll do for today is I will try and make Sonic face left or right, depending on which way you're pushing the joystick. So we'll add a new variable in here, which we'll call Sonic D, which is Sonic's direction. And then we need to set that to an initial value, which we will set to zero. Sonic D, which is Sonic's direction. And then in the game loop, what we have to do is we have to do a little bit of maths here. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this information into the D0 register. Then we'll add Sonic's direction to that and then put the result into A1, which is where it wants to go in the first place. And then all we have to do is if we're pressing right, then we make his direction zero. And if we're moving left, we make his direction 800, which seems a strange thing to do, but 800 is actually in, in this uh, sprite data. 800 means mirror the graphic around that axis. Okay, so we'll build that and see how it works. And now when we run the game, there you go. If I move left and right, you can see that Sonic is facing the right direction as he moves around. Excellent. Well, there you go. So that's got Sonic on the screen and moving. There's some stuff for you to play around with there. You can probably change those adds and subtracts uh, to make Sonic move faster or not. You can play with the palettes. You can try adding more than one sprite. You can mess around with the joystick. I hope you've enjoyed this section. As always, if you like this, uh, please like this. And if you really like it, then please subscribe. I look forward to seeing you next time. Goodbye.